Hi, it's Nick Park here from Evangelical Alliance Ireland, and this is our weekly video entitled It's Friday, but Sunday's coming. I wasn't going to do a video this week. I'm actually on holiday this week down in County Kerry. And yes, that is a picture of Charlie Chaplin over my shoulder. And in fact, the house where I'm staying here in Waterville, uh, there's pictures of Charlie Chaplin all over the joint. And that actually inspired me to actually record a video for this week. Because Charlie Chaplin and his family, they were regular visitors to Waterville. They first came here on holiday in 1959 and came for the next 10 years every year. Faithfully, the Chaplin family holidayed here in Waterville, County Kerry. Now, uh, we'll come back to Charlie in a minute. But let me just explain something that really uh, encouraged me and also concerned me in recent weeks. Um, there's a team of young women uh, called Team Memory Haven. Uh, they're made up of Margaret Akano, Rachel Akano, and Joy Najekwe. And they are mentored by Evelyn Namayo. Now, these four ladies, I know all of them through our church activities. They are Pentecostal Christians, Evangelical Christians. And one of our aims whenever Evangelical Alliance was first established a number of years ago was that the gospel would become unavoidable, that people would keep encountering it and it would have influence in all kinds of places, even such things as architecture in the public square. And some people made fun of that. They said, oh, how's, how's the gospel going to affect things like this? Well, one of the ways is the gospel gives people confidence. The gospel gives people faith and courage to step out and follow their dream. And Rachel, Margaret and Joy, under Evelyn's mentorship, did this by entering a Technovation Global Summit. It's basically a competition for young women from all around the world uh, to develop an app that is going to improve the world. And they, were, they developed an app called Memory Haven because it's all to do with dementia. And they stumbled upon a very simple truth, which is that people with dementia often still remember music. That whatever part of our brain remembers music, it doesn't appear to be affected by dementia. Now, I've observed this myself. I was in a, a conference in Holland a few years ago where a friend of mine whose wife had very advanced dementia was barely able to talk to us, didn't recognize her husband or anyone else. But when we began to sing worship songs, she's suddenly singing the songs. She can still remember the words. Well, anyway, um, Evelyn, together with the, the three young ladies, Margaret, Rachel and Joy, developed this uh, app that would use music, that a playlist would use, uh, would use faces, alerts, voice recognition and health checks, both for people with dementia and their carers. And this app would be an aid to people with dementia uh, to hold on to memories. A great idea. And it was entered into the globe, the Technovation Summit with over, uh, over 1500 apps from 5,000 students entered in this competition. And they were the only European entry to reach the final. And they got a lot of publicity in this. I mean, they were featured on, uh, on RTE News, on, on Euro News, on Silicon Republic, in the Irish Times, local radio stations. They were, they were getting tweets of support from national politicians and, and everything else. A great good news story of young people, uh, evangelical Christians just stepping out and trying to do something positive to change the world, or, or so you would think. But sadly, after they were featured in the Irish Times, there was a whole thread developed on Twitter that degenerated into the worst form of racism, with people saying that these girls couldn't represent Ireland because they were black and therefore weren't Irish. And, and it got even worse. Now, I didn't view the thread myself, but an African lady who saw it all told me that there was uh, photos of monkeys being photoshopped and the girls' faces being so, su superimposed 
on them. Really disgusting racism. Well, thank God they didn't allow themselves to be derailed from this and they went on, they made it to the final. And then in the final, they won both the People's Choice Award and the grand prize, uh, which is absolutely incredible for young people from Ireland to win a, a global uh, competition like this against such stiff opposition. And I'm so proud of them. I'm so proud, I'm so proud uh, to know them. I have to say that uh, in a, as, a past, as a pastor. But, uh, you know, I was thinking about the racism that they faced. And that brings me back to, to Charlie Chaplin here. Because Charlie Chaplin, of course, we know him as the funny little man in the silent movies. But Chaplin's most popular ever film was not a silent movie. It was the first full sound movie that he ever made. It was in 1940. It was called The Great Dictator. And it was basically a spoof of Adolf Hitler. And it was used to ridicule Hitler and to show how ridiculous his antics and his beliefs were. And like I say, it became Chaplin's greatest ever film. Now, normally I'm not a great fan of celebrities involving themselves in political endorsements and, and that kind of thing. Uh, but I have to say, I really admire Charlie Chaplin uh, for what he did. He made the whole world laugh, but he stood up to the horrible hate of Hitler and his Nazis. Which brings me back to the, what Joy and Rachel and Margaret encountered uh, in that horrible Twitter thread. Because I want to say this, that at first my reaction was to get really angry and to blast off about how disgusting that people would behave in such a way to three girls that are doing nothing but doing their best to better Ireland and to better the world. But the more I thought about it, I thought of this, that Chaplin was right, that people with such hate-filled views, actually the best thing is not to get mad at them, is not even to argue with them. It's just to laugh at how absurd their beliefs are. Because I don't know if any of the people that expressed such racism will watch any of our videos anyway, but I would say this to the racists. I would say that Margaret and Rachel and Joy represent, and Evelyn represent the future of Ireland. They represent an Ireland that can be confident, restoring us as people of saints and scholars that can be known throughout the world for innovation and compassion and faith and courage. They are the Ireland of the future. And those that, that attacked them and those that feel threatened by three young women stepping out and doing, following their dream, I would just say to those people that I said they are Ireland's future, but you, the racists, are not Ireland's future. You're not even Ireland's past because Ireland was never that nasty a place as you would like it to be. And I would say we're not going to get mad at you. We're not going to give you the attention that you crave. Uh, we're simply going to laugh at how ridiculous such beliefs are. But we're going to spend our time celebrating brave young women like Rachel, Margaret, Joy and their mentor Evelyn. I Well done to these ladies. I admire you and I look forward to seeing many, many more good news stories of Irish evangelicals of every nationality and every, every colour, but they're part of the Irish church stepping out and making a dis difference. And yes, these trailblazers have maybe had to endure uh, some nastiness and I'm sure that hurt, but I would say it might be Friday but Sunday's coming. There's a better day coming. And Rachel, Margaret, Joy, Evelyn, you're part of that better day. And I'm proud to be part of this nation with you. God bless you.